everybody. Welcome to the first episode of our podcast. Uh, today, the host is me, Teresa. And me, Amel. Okay, so we are going to start by talking about how we got even to this topic. It was very difficult at first. I'm not going to lie. We were thinking of uh, making something about critical thinking. And then we actually came across this concept of digital communities, which in fact, I find really fascinating because it somehow recalls of the dangers of the internet. And, uh, you know, it's also very weird because there is low accountability for personal actions. But at the same time, it's very, very something new and something very powerful as we could see during the uh, January attack on capital. And that's how we actually noticed the group of QAnon. And when we first noticed it, we knew we wanted to do uh, a research on this topic. And it, it was a very uh, great question. Like, how do these people mobilize? What's behind it? So, uh, Amel, could you tell us how did we come from just thinking about digital communities to our research question? Well, um, to start at the very beginning, uh, we had to dwell on the progress of our research methods. So we did it in uh, several steps. So as a first step, um, it was uh, the reflection on how um, to approach our topic in what what our research question would be. So after long debates um, and hesitations, we have finally decided to work on how social media and algorithms uh, have an influence on one's beliefs and political opinions. Mm -hmm. But to narrow it down a bit, uh, we focused especially on the expansion of conspiracy theories through social media. So uh, we finally uh, decided um, on our uh, research question, which was how does social media foster the expansion of conspiracy theories and enable the formation of their communities? However, to answer this question, we needed to go um, through a qualitative research method, you know, um, because... Mm -hmm. What did we um, do exactly? Sorry. Well, what were the steps that we followed? Well, qualitative studies aim to find out people's opinion and feelings rather than information that can easily be shown in numbers. So this is how we went. Uh, so the methods uh, used to answer this research question um, could be divided in three main steps. So for the first one, uh, we have read articles in relation with many subjects linked or not to our topic. Uh, so there were topics proposed by the teacher, but also personal readings that we have added so that we can have um, better tools for the following steps and that we can construct ideas around concepts that for some were totally unknown and obscure. So it was really a step of reflection, putting words on what we are analyzing and um, understanding the main concepts that will, that were, that will uh, be presented in another episode uh, of the pod, uh, on another podcast. Um, then, uh, after having read those articles and having extracted what was uh, important and useful for us, we have uh, decided to focus on the QAnon community. So, it, it's a very broad topic, we had to narrow it to a specific case, I would say so, that uh, it can be easier to observe and analyze. Uh, so, to make a short parenthesis, uh, so that it so that it is clear, uh, QAnon is an extreme right-wing conspiracy theory and movement from the United States, uh, grouping together promoters of conspiracy theories according to which a secret war is taking place between Donald Trump and elites in the government, the financial world uh, and the media uh, who would commit pedophilic, cannibal and satanic crimes. So we observed... Right, right. Uh, can I ask you a question? So yeah. uh, how did we come to observe this QAnon community? Because it's a very prevalent community, but at the same time, you know, how did we even approach them? Which social network did we use? Oh, very interesting question, Teresa. Um, well, we, we observed this QAnon community on a social network called Gab. So known to host several types of conspiracy theorists and therefore um, active supporters of this community. Uh, so what was interesting with Gab is also the fact that people are not 
restricted, you know, and can really express themselves no matter what they say or what they what they do. So we were more likely to find and observe conspiracists there than anywhere else. So we created an account called uh, Jack Harris, so with a fake email address, in order to anonymously observe their groups and their posts <laughs> on Gab. So the observation were done, yeah, in several hours uh, in turn. So concretely, yeah, we, we tried to analyze how Gab fosters uh, the expansion of QAnon conspiracies and um, mm -hmm. enables the formation of their community. Okay, so what was the next step, you know, after observation? What, what did we actually do with all the data that we gathered? Well, uh, the next step was the interviews. So, um, concretely, we have just sent messages uh, on the platform Gab uh, to some people coming from the QAnon community, so in QAnon groups. And so we have shared a little bit with them um, through messages mainly, yeah. And yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us, uh, Teresa, uh, like how we have managed to to share our results and all the, the final project at the end? Well, that is a step at which we are now. Um, it's this podcast. Um, mm -hmm. On the one hand, it uh, was kind of a challenge for all of us because we've never done a podcast, we've never done something like this. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it was one-hearted decision because podcast is truly an easily accessible format, uh, easy to follow, easy to listen to and uh, mm -hmm. to engage yourself within. And... Mm -hmm. At the same time, what we wanted to do with the data that we found was a nece uh, necessary to tell a story, tell a story of what the community is, how it is formed, uh, how it's working. And we believe podcast is simply amazing for it. Uh, and especially if it's put into a format of IGTV, uh, many people can access it and many people can truly live with us through the experience of what QAnon and uh, what the research on GAP is. Therefore, mm -hmm. we decided to do this. And it's a challenge, but we are <laughs> really excited <laughs> to release new episodes. So um, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, thank you for being here with me today. And talking about this and we are looking forward to the second episode bye and thank yes. you